Do you believe in God? Oh, that's a big question. Okay, no. Do you believe in God? No. I guess you'd have to put me down in the, in the don't knows column on that one. I'm an agnostic. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't. Do you believe in God? No. Absolutely not. No evidence for it. It's interesting. It's actually a topic that interests me a lot because I met scientists, you know, there are fundamentalist Christian physicists, there are staunch atheist physicists. Uh, I would say probably the staunch atheists are probably in the majority. I mean, I can't prove that there is no God, I can't prove that there is one, but as far as belief goes, I don't believe that there is one. Do you believe in God? Not really. I don't believe in the sort of Judeo-Christian God. But then I also don't believe that the universe was sneezed out of the nose of the great green oracle seizure. I don't believe that it was brought into existence by the flying spaghetti monster. I don't believe that Thor, Zeus or whatever god you can think of. There are an infinite number of possibilities and because I'm a scientist what I'm interested in is, is evidence. There's no contradiction. It's possible to both have a religious belief um, and, and to, to be a scientist. Uh, for my part, I guess maybe I just lack the imagination or the leap of faith you'd need to actually, to actually believe in religion as well, so you have to put me down in the agnostics column. My, I guess, uh, departure from religion came, I think, as early as nine or ten, when I was, uh, we were being taught about uh, a big element of the Catholic faith, which is called transubstantiation. Transubstantiation, for those who don't know, means that during the Eucharist, during the, the, the sort of communion ceremony, the body is the, the bread is actually physically changed, whatever that means in terms of Catholic doctrine, into the into the, the body of Christ. And I got very excited as a nine-year-old and stuck my hand up excitedly in the class and go, look, look, I got a microscope for Christmas. What we can do, we can do this really great experiment. We can look at the, the, the host beforehand and then we can do the Holy Communion thing and then we can look at it afterwards and compare the two. Wouldn't that be a great experiment? And I got sent out of the class and um, also uh, a note was sent to the parish priest. Um, and to I was told that those type of questions are not the questions you should ask. Just observe the world and make your own, own opinion about it. So religion and I departed a ways very, very long time ago. Anyway, I think religion is wonderful for all the good work it does, but uh, I can't find my way to believe in it, in God. Is that fair? You'll keep your mouth closed. Don't you? <laughs> What's your favourite astronomical feature? My favourite astronomical phenomenon is are comets, when you can see them in the sky and they just hang there for months and you just watch them. I'm fascinated by that. So it's got to be, I think it's those star-forming pillars that the Hubble Space Telescope took this truly amazing picture of. Which is a little strange, because actually the main thing I research on is galaxies, but actually in terms of beautiful pictures, that really is stunning. And it's just because it's such a, it's such a beautiful object. It's nothing to do with the fact that it's an astronomical object. You know, if I'd seen that picture hung up in an art gallery, I'd have said, that's a really pretty picture. There's a bright star just out of the picture, which is kind of blazing down on it and is eroding these pillars away. And so you see these pillars of gas and then little stars just starting to pop out from them. So from a scientific point of view, it's fascinating, but fundamentally it's just because it's a very pretty picture. I have a particular favorite picture, which you can look up on the internet. It's, uh, it's a picture by the Hubble Space Telescope of the galaxy cluster Abel 2218. And it's one of the iconic images because it shows really spectacular examples of gravitational lensing, which is something that I've worked on in the past. But I like this picture because just at a glance, it tells us two really amazing things about the universe. First, that Einstein was right and that mass bends light. And secondly, that dark matter exists. Uh, it's a lot to infer from one image, but it's a pretty powerful package and it looks beautiful as well. My favorite astronomical feature, I think my favorite photo is, is, is something you can't see with the naked eye. It's the Hubble deep field uh, image. The one where you, you look at it and you realize that there are faint blue objects in that image that are, you know, they're about 10 billion years old. And you just think, you're looking at it and you're thinking, that light has been traveling for 10 billion years. And it, it's just remarkable. That's, that's the remarkable thing about astronomy, that uh, when you look out, you're not just looking at beautiful things. You're not just looking at large distances. You're looking back in time. And that is quite amazing.